only short way into the hiking trail. Uh, this is Sherman Pass Trail. It's generally heading kind of in the northish direction. Yeah, my friend's uh, checking out the the western white pine seed cones to see if the crop is healthy this year. And this western white pine is very tall, relatively narrow. You could kind of, if you know what the sugar pine looks like, you could tell the relationship in the way the branches just sprawl out as opposed to, well, when they're younger, they, they can be a lot tighter and narrower like that young western white pine. But this western white pine, still fairly young, but it's probably about 100, maybe 110 feet tall. It's definitely, it's definitely starting to show more adult characteristics with regards to the branching patterns. Like I said, they're, they're, their branching patterns are kind of similar to sugar pies, except the branches usually, the branches don't really droop. It's just looking at them from below, you can see the way the branches kind of sprawl out, really in charismatic shapes. Shows the relationship to the white pine group. Of course, like I said, the sugar pine is related to it. And you know, I point out sugar pines a lot when I'm on the trail. But these up here, we are, I think we are a bit too high for any sugar pines, at least uh, this far north in uh, Tulare County. Um, I've seen sugar pines above 9,000 feet in the San Gabriels, but yeah, these are western white pines. This is basically a bi-typical, bi bi-typic stand of western white pine and red fir. So we do have a small Sierra lodgepole pine right here. This is Pinus contorta subspecies Mariana. You see their cones are very tiny. Very small cones. And the lodgepole pines are fairly typical. I mean, not, not typical. Actually quite unique because they're in their own group. They're in another group. I want to say they're in the section contorta, but I'm not 100% sure. Their cones are much tinier, and they have a little prickle at the end of them. So just be a little careful if you uh, touch a cone of one of these. But uh, whereas uh, western white pine has needles and bundles of five, typical of the white pine group, lodgepole pines, as you can see here, have their needles in bundles of two. And they're kind of flat. Kind of flat and a little wider than typical pine needles. Um, Another species of lodgepole pine that grows up in the Rocky Mountains and eastern Oregon, more interior mountain ranges, that's the Rocky Mountain lodgepole pine, Pinus contorta subspe subspecies latifolia. The subepithet latifolia refers to having a broad leaf. Latifolia is Latin for broad leaf. So if you see names like latifolia, it means broad leaf. Brevifolia is short leaf, like uh, Joshua tree yuccas, yucca brevifolia, because their leaves are shorter than most of the other yuccas found in the southwest. So sometimes looking at the epithets and sub-epithets can really give you a good sense of the characteristics of the trees. Abies magnifica means lar means huge, magnificent, huge, or magnificent fur, because red furs can get to about 200 feet in the most optimal of environs. I haven't seen any quite that tall here. I've seen some that are about 170 feet. There's some very tall red furs here that are probably about 140, because we're just a little more exposed up here, so I don't expect the trees to be quite as large, but they are fairly decent sized. And but yeah, here we go. See the branching pattern on this western white pine right here? That's the that's the white pine. That's the white pine branching structure. Even eastern white pines, uh, the, I mean, their branches can be kind of charismatic too, but they're more akin to that one right there where they're kind of upright and very tiered. But with age, yeah, they do the sugar pine thing where they kind of sprawl out. So it's a very nice trail. It's a little bit on the warm side today, but it's very comfortable in the shade. Um, you can tell the views are not very clear today um, because there must be a, I think there's a wildfire somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is, but some of the highways are closed. Like I think it was, was it 
290, 290 or Highway 20. A couple of those highways are actually closed, and but it's very, very smoky. The air is very smoky, and you can smell a little bit of that in the air. But the overwhelming smell here is the smell of the western white pine and the red firs and the occasional lodge poles. But at the base of the at the base of the trail, there are quite a few more lodge poles. But we're starting to see some more popping up. It's a very beautiful area, and I very highly recommend this hike. I even am not even probably not even a quarter of the way to the top, but we're just taking our time and enjoying the sights because I really don't get out to the Sierras very often. My friend and I really don't get out here very often. He lives in Las Vegas. He used to live in uh, Kern County, but uh, he lives in Las Vegas, and I live in Orange County, as I've noted before on previous videos. And this is far. It's it's a long drive. It's about a four hour drive to to get to Porterville. Maybe, yeah, about four hours, I would say. Um, and it's about an hour and a half to drive from Porterville to here. About an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. So, this is not something you want to do and then go home the same day unless you're really that desperate to get out and don't give a, give a hoot. <laughs> but... It's good to come up here and have some lodgings. Um, definitely highly recommend it. It's absolutely splendid up here. Um, I mean, I've been in the Sherman Pass area before, but I've never hiked the trail across the road on the north side of Sherman Pass Road. And lovely open stands of pines and firs. So if you can get out here, uh, if you can get out here, I highly recommend hiking the, the Kern River Sierra. This is the Kern River Ranger District, I believe, we're in right now. Where I was yesterday was actually the Western Divide Ranger District because I was west of the Kern River. The Kern River basically divides the Western Divide and the Kern River Ranger Districts. Um, I'll check in pretty soon with some more updates. Um, hopefully I'll get a view of the peak soon. I thought I saw it behind the trees, but that's still a ways off and it's kind of hazy to see everything today. So I'll check in later with some more interesting finds and updates.